All right, let's take a look at question two. Uh, the first thing we're told here is that segment AD, which is right here, is perpendicular to BC. So that's really critical to solving this problem because it tells us these are right triangles. We are not told that triangle ABC is a right triangle, so we are not going to assume that it is. Um, and let's take a look. We're going to be asked to find X, Z, the measure of angle A, C, D, which is this angle right here, and the measure of angle B, A, D, which is this top angle. So um, it doesn't really, well, it sort of matters what order. Um, let's find X first. We'll just kind of go in order. So if I want to find X, I really only need to look at this triangle, triangle A, B, D. And so um, I'm given that this is a right triangle and that this is 62 degrees. I know that this is the length of my hypotenuse and that X is going to be the side that is opposite that 62 degree angle. So I want to use the sine function for that. So I could say that the sine of 62 degrees is equal to the opposite side, which is x, over the hypotenuse, which is 7. So now, if we want to get this in a form we can plug in the calculator, we would have to multiply both sides by 7, and rewrite this 7 times the sine of 62 degrees, and that's going to give us x. So um, make sure you're in degrees in your calculator. And then you just type in 7 sine 62, and we get approximately 6.181, because we'll round that to three places. So 6.181 for the length of x. Um, I'm going to label that on there, too. All right, next thing, we um, have enough information to find angle Z. And so um, if we want to find angle Z, or sorry, angle Z, the length of side Z, um, and I think what maybe needs to be specified here is that just this length is Z. I'm not sure how clear that was. Um, so just really we could call this the length DC. Um, so now if we want to find that, we can do that without knowing either of these two angles because we can use the Pythagorean theorem. Um, so let's go ahead and use the Pythagorean theorem since we already found this side. And um, I'm going to do it really precisely, but I know you might be tempted to use this rounded answer. So if we want to find this side Z, we essentially have a triangle. I'm going to just sort of resketch it. We have a right triangle where the hypotenuse is 15. Um, we found the side already. We're looking for side Z. We don't know these two angles yet, although I suppose we could have found one of the angles first. Um, what we also know is that this is 6.181, but that's a rounded answer. You really used 7 times the sine of 62 to get that answer. And if we plug that into our calculator, we'll actually get something more precise. Um, you can use the Pythagorean theorem with that. So since this is your hypotenuse, it's the longest side. So I want to subtract this squared leg from the hypotenuse squared. So 15 squared minus, I'm going to write 7 sine 62 in parentheses and square that entire thing in my calculator. That's going to give us z squared. So this is like using the Pythagorean theorem to say that like c squared minus a squared equals b squared, for example. Now, um, the calculator will do this. The reason I'm using this and not 6.181 is that was an approximation, and I just want to be as precise as possible. So um, let's do this part in the calculator. Let's see. Maybe I can get this on the screen all at once. All right, so 15 squared... Oops, sorry. Um, 15 squared minus, and then in parentheses, 7 sine of 62, close parentheses, squared. We get this value for z squared. Um, to be very precise, I'm still not even going to write that down yet. I'm going to take the square root of my answer, and I get this number. So the value of z 
is approximately 13.667. And we said z squared was approximately 186. Point, really 799, so really 186.800 is our approximation of z squared. Okay, so 13.667 is what we found there. Okay, um, I'm going to label that here. All right, um, to find these two angles, I am just going to go ahead and use those rounded values. So we're asked to find the measure of angle A, C, D, which is this angle. And um, if you think about that, we now have um, all three sides of the triangle if we just look at triangle ADC. And um, that's certainly enough information that we could use um, sine, cosine, or tangent. I'm going to say that it's best if we use sine or cosine since we know this is exactly 15. And um, I don't know, I'm just going to go ahead and use the sine of this one. So if I use sine, really inverse sine, um, I'm going to need my opposite and my hypotenuse. All right, so let's say the inverse sine of angle ACD, actually I'm going to write it out this way first, sorry, the sine of, and I'm going to write in parentheses, angle ACD is equal to, and we know sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite side of this was where we had our 7 times the sine of 62. Just to not be super confusing here, I will use that rounded value. It would probably be better if we use 7 sine 62, but we'll live. Um, so that's our opposite side, and then our hypotenuse is 15. So again, we can't plug this into the calculator, but we can now change this to inverse sine. So I can say the inverse sine of 6.181 over 15 equals the measure of angle A, C, D. So that's how we'll find that measure of that angle. All right, so we're going to take our inverse sine, so second sine, and plug in 6.181 divided by 15. We get 24.335 when we round that. So this is approximately 24.335 degrees. So now we have two ways that we could find this last angle, the measure of angle BAD. Um, one way is we could use trig. The other way is that we could um, use what we know about the interior angles of triangles. And I would actually say that's probably, oh man, that's probably your best bet there. And as I'm thinking about that, we maybe could have done this differently, but... We're committed to it now. So um, let's see. If you look at this, if you're asked to find the measure of angle BAD, um, what would probably be easiest, we already know that this is 90 degrees. We know that this is 62 degrees, and we know that those three angles have to add up to 180. So I could think that 90 plus 62 plus the measure of angle BAD has to be 180. All right, and this is just what we know about triangles. So when I add 90 and 62, that's 152, plus the measure of angle B, A, D has to equal 180. Subtract 152 from 180, and we're left with 28 degrees. So um, the measure of angle B, A, D must equal 28 degrees. Okay, and again, you could check that because 62 plus 28 plus 90 is 180.